Hi everyone. This video is a follow-up to my previous video on how to test for first stage moderated mediation using process with uh, SPSS. So in my previous video, I tested uh, the model that you see on your screen, mainly the, the one, uh, the second one below, um, using the drop-down menu system. And uh, what I want to show you really quickly is how you can specify this model using process syntax. And just uh, really quickly, as a recap, as you're looking at this model, just keep in mind that we have the morningness variable, that is our variable X, the psychological distress variable, that is Y, sleep, sleep quality, which is variable M, the mediator, and then age is our W variable, which is the proposed moderator. And uh, just as a refresher, um, this is the data set that we were working with. Uh, we went to analyze, we went to regression, uh, selected the process macro. This is just the drop-down menu. I'm just briefly going through this just to, to show you what we're gonna be specifying through syntax. So the X variable was morning, the Y variable was distress, the uh, moderator was uh, age, and then this variable uh, uh, sleep quality was our, uh, not our covariate, but our mediator. Then uh, model number, we had set it at seven. Confidence interval was set by default at 95. Bootstrap number of samples was 5,000. Our options, we had selected generate code for visualizing uh, interactions. We had selected only continuous variables that define products. We left this uh, probe interaction set at P less than 0 0.10 and a conditioning value set at the 16th, 50th, and 84th percentiles. So that's how we generated our results. <clears throat> now, when you download a, the uh, process macro uh, from uh, the website, uh, basically, the it comes in the form of a zip folder. Uh, this is um, a copy of it on my computer right here. And if you open this up, uh, I'm just going to go under Windows Explorer, you'll see process for SPSS. So if you double click on this, um, this is actually where you where you get the the um, the f file in order to install the uh, the uh, Windows um kind of the Windows-driven system, if you will, or the uh, dialog box. Uh, but instead, we're going to use this right here, which is, um, it says process. The file type is SPSS syntax file. So I'm going to double-click on this to open it up. So this is the syntax file. And in order to use this with our data, mind you, um, our data is right here. And we've just opened up this syntax file. To use the syntax file, we need to activate um, the the uh, process macro. So in other words, we're going to right click and uh, click on run all. So when I do that, it um, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, it'll say running matrix and so forth. And then this should be the final uh, message that you get. This has activated the process macro so that now we can use the process syntax in order to, uh, uh, to uh, specify our model and run it. So I'm gonna go back uh, here into our syntax file. I can either go here or I could uh, create a new syntax file. I guess maybe I'll just go ahead and open up a new syntax file. I'll go to file syntax right here. And so now the process macro is ready for you. So I'm gonna start off with the process command and then type in y equals, and then the name of my dependent variable, which is distress forward slash x equals and the name of my independent variable, which is morning. That's the variable name in the data set. Forward slash, then m equals, and then s l q a r uh, l r right there. That's the name of the mediator. And then forward slash, w, we'll set this equal to age. Uh, that's our moderator. Then forward slash, model, we're going to set this equal to 7 forward slash center, we're going to set this equal to two, which is consistent with what we had specified using the drop down menus. Then forward slash int probe, we'll go ahead and set this equal to 0.10, which is consistent with that default. Uh, forward slash, 
uh, CONF equals 95. By default, uh, the confidence intervals that are generated are 95% confidence intervals, but this is just showing you if you wanted to change it to a 99%, you could do that very easily. I'm just going to stick with the default here. Then forward slash uh, boot set equal to 5,000. That's the default. But if we wanted to change it, we certainly could. Then forward slash, <clears throat> then plot, set that equal to 1. So that's uh, to generate uh, the plot of the uh, simple slopes. Then forward slash, JN, set that equal to one if we want the johnson neiman output, then forward slash, and then we can set a seed number. So I'm gonna set seed, uh, I'm gonna set it equal to one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, end it with a period. Now, the reason why uh, the seed uh, may be important to you is because when you run your analysis through the drop-down menu system, you don't have the option of setting a seed number. So when you run your, um, your analysis, uh, most of the results will be exactly the same from one time from one run to another run if you're using your same data and same specification. But one thing that changes um, can be the uh, bootstrap confidence intervals. Basically, the lower and the upper bound of those confidence intervals can vary from analysis to analysis. And that's because the seed that is used in each analysis is a random seed. And so if you want the same uh, uh, lower and upper bounds for your confidence intervals, uh, if you're going to, let's say, run the analysis now, and then let's say you lose your output, um, you know, your paper copy of your output, and you want to rerun the analysis tomorrow, you can set a seed number uh, uh, and have that seed number uh, used tomorrow and you'll get the same result as if uh, as when you run the analysis with that seed number today. But if you let's say you um, uh, ran your analysis through the menus, the drop down menus, uh, you don't have that option. So if you run your analysis today and you run your analysis tomorrow after losing your output from today's analysis, then uh, the bootstrap confidence intervals may look a little bit different, which can be a little bit aggravating. So uh, at any rate, at the very end of this, we want to make sure that there's a period. So we can just highlight all of this, click on the green arrow, and it's going to generate our output. So uh, there you go. So again, most of this is going to be exactly the same uh, as when we ran our analysis previously uh, in the previous video using uh, the drop-down menu system. But, uh, you know, when we scroll down, you'll see that, uh, for instance, right down at the bottom, it says uh, boot uh, uh, confidence intervals. The lower bound is 0 0.001. The upper bound is 0 0.0189. And uh, um, in the video, uh, you know, the index of moderated mediation, it actually turned out to be not significant. Um, whereas in the PowerPoint that I put together, it had been significant. And that's because of that, that uh, wiggling of those, uh, uh, of the um, uh, confidence intervals due to the difference in the random seeds for each subsequent analysis. But if I rerun the analysis now uh, using the, uh, the uh, using the same seed number, then we'll end up with the same value. So I'm just kind of rerunning it uh, here. So we'll scroll down and you'll see that we get the exact same results. So right down there, there's a 0 .0001 and 0 .0189. So um, at any rate, that's just kind of the basics there for running your analysis. I will say too, that when you scroll up here, just keep in mind, that the uh, conditional uh, effects based on how we specified our model, uh, you know, again, this is uh, at the fifth, the uh, 16th percentile for age, 50th percentile, and the 84th percentile, um, which is consistent with, you know, what we had done previously using the drop down menus. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video presentation. And thanks for watching.